Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Squat Cobbler. I am Kelly at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter and Instagram. And here, copying me as always, is... <laughs> I am Dr. Mike at Official Pagan on everything. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the notification thing, do whatever it is you need to do. Write our names on your body, go streaking, whatever it takes to get the message out there. Got to always throw in that bonus material, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Kelly pre-approves all of this, by the way. Yeah. Read, don't, the cap. Read the cap. Don't get thrown by that genuine shocked look on his face. Yeah. It's, <laughs> He's it's an always, incredible actor. It's uh, a, <laughs> yeah, noted. World renowned. Um, so uh, this week, uh, we're back to talking a little bit about a favorite topic of mine, uh, the Amiga 500. I gotta be honest, it's becoming quickly a favorite topic of mine as well. Yeah, it's it's a cool thing. <laughs> and some interesting things have happened. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the Amiga 500 Mini that we had a show on a little while back, link is in the description. Uh, we uh, were very much excited for waiting for pre-orders to come out. And Dr. Mike was on the ball and uh, spotted that, let us know. And so you can indeed go to Amazon right now and do your pre-order on your for your Amiga 500 Mini, which I have done. Very nice. Very nice. I will be soon. I'm still waiting for my hypothetical order of my <laughs> at Games Legends Mini. So I was I was hoping that would be out of the way first. So seems reasonable. But I, I fully intend on ordering this product. Yeah. And they're talking about a delivery in March uh, of next year. So or availability, I guess, in March of next year. So we'll wait and see. Uh, so on a related note, no one knows when the Amico is going to show up. <laughs> it kind of keeps sliding around. Uh, and uh, came across an interesting article that talked about possibly, and actually based on the fact that the, the individual who uh, was sharing this information actually had kind of court documents, <laughs> Uh, there's a little bit of a dust up going on between the folks that own Amiga as a, uh, as a trademark and feeling that Amico runs a little too close to that. Um, now I believe Amico is Italian for friend where Amiga is Portuguese and Spanish for friend, both of them, uh, in the female gender because everybody, but the United States <laughs> or English speaking folks rather um, do this masculine feminine thing. So I really regretted throwing that out to you, Mike, <laughs> but do you have any comments? on well, masculine? First off, Let me just say, this is why in some ways our country has always been more progressive because we were not forcing gender normative pronouns down people's throats in the very structure of our language. There you go. So you're welcome. <laughs> rest, rest of world catch up. Yeah. <laughs> Once that. again, leading the way. Um, I this it was very interesting when I came across this because um, it it retroactively makes a lot of sense. It's not something I think would have clicked for me. But yeah, I get I get it. I don't think this is the main problem though behind the Amico. Um, I, I think there's other issues that are plaguing them as well. But I think it's one of them. I think it's one of their problems right now. Yeah, I I think they're beset by some problems. Yeah. Got some folks out there too, kind of starting to to bark a little bit about the technical specs, which I'm not really qualified to to weigh in and raise a concern or not on. But there's a little bit of that out there. Uh, now yeah. there's the name thing. Now there's the sliding availability date. All things uh, not great uh, no. for this. And it looks like the uh, Amiga 500 Mini will have been announced earlier and at your home earlier <laughs> than the Amiga. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see. And so kind of wrapping up the uh, Amiga 500 Mini conversation, uh, it looks like the peripherals for it, which is a kind of standard, fair, decent, you know, looks like a pretty decent quality game pad, uh, consistent with the kind of newer gaming systems, game pads. So actually, um, I, in my, as a newly minted Amiga fan, have been looking up different Amiga things. That is an Amiga game pad. 
yeah it's the gamepad from the cd version oh the okay there you go yeah. okay it's the amiga yeah. cd 32 i believe it was called yep that's the gamepad from that because i saw a lot of people saying well, why didn't they use the original amiga and then people were very quick the, the hardcore amiga people were like that's the amiga cd 32 game <laughs> so i looked it up and that is correct yeah. that looks yeah. identical to those yeah i i had a off so i i never had the cd 32 uh but i did have more of a just kind of an off market um you know uh non oem gamepad that i used on my amiga 2000 and uh that worked out great uh and i i kind of the amiga 3000 had just come out they were doing some other things which is when i kind of sadly left the amiga platform and, and went over to the the dark world of blue screen but uh it um the uh, the cd was kind of out coming in that time frame too so that's cool to know so that is now game accurate to the cd 32 yes uh, and then in addition as we mentioned before the amiga the amiga mouse is now available what a, and so i was happy and and um sad in the respect that i'd really like a new amiga mouse because i still have my 2000 it still boots up and runs and i have a 500 too uh, that I think still runs, but I haven't really played with it much lately. Um, and, but no worthwhile mouse anymore. <laughs> They're just, they just, they were never the absolute sturdiest, uh, to begin with, but just out of years of wear and tear, my, my mouse is, you know, toast for the, for the Amiga. Uh, but these new ones are all USB, which, uh, the Amiga has more of the eight pin plug-in kind of deal. So, We'll have to have to see on that, but uh, I assume. I and mean, I'm sure you, there's an adapter that you can get. Oh, there has to be. Uh, you would think it's probably more than the mouse itself. <laughs> no doubt, I'm sure it exists. Yeah, which would be great to do because then I then I'd uh, be able to um, put that up somewhere. I have to find a place for it, but uh, the, you'd love to have my 2000 back up and running again. But there's just so many other options now with Super Console X, uh, with Amiga Forever. Just Amiga emulation on the on uh, on your PC uh, with with other options available now that the uh, the, uh, the Amiga 500 Mini uh, there's there's a lot of ways I can get an Amiga fix without cranking out the old hardware uh, but we'll see there's something about the whole old hardware that's pretty cool too so we'll we'll keep playing around yeah I gotta be honest, I'm I was very excited and not that I mean you can buy additional. Uh, game uh, joysticks and things for the Atari 60, uh, Atari uh, Commodore 64 mini that they put out as well as the full size. Um, so you brought up a really interesting point with it right off the bat. There was a, one of the things people really complained about when the C64 mini came out was some people were saying, well, why didn't they do this game pad or that game pad that those were aftermarket third party controllers that people were talking about the Commodore <laughs> joystick is the one that it came with so that was kind of interesting so they did I, I was wondering and i saw some people posting too like oh well did they you know kind of give in to fans with this amiga controller but it is interesting to see it's from the cd32 which from my understanding was the amiga version that was completely consoleized it didn't have the computer functionality although it seems like most people used amiga as a gaming system primarily nope. it, the CD32 didn't give you the option. It was a gaming system. <laughs> so it makes sense, I guess, to pull the gamepad from that one specifically. Yeah, and I'd have to go back, and there is a great, uh, and you'll likely, folks, on a future Squad Cobbler hear a little bit more about Amiga Forever, uh, that software, but included uh, kind of with the uh, one of the packages of Amiga Forever, uh, you get a really good documentary of the, the life and death of Amiga. And they cover a lot of the, the variations on hardware. And I think by and large, you're right out of the box and, and taking it in the C32 was it's gaming console was targeted to, but they also continued wherever they could to try and position to say, you know, ultimately the guts of this thing are the same guts that are in, in the other things. So with uh, clever use of peripherals and add-ons, <laughs> you could potentially convert your game console to, start to kind of sort of act like a computer, but your form factor is kind of jacked up at that point, but uh, it's something to think about. So, uh, but good stuff. But yeah, it's a, it's a shame because the C, the C, the CD 32 had a pretty short lifespan um, in terms of uh, folks getting a chance to really experience and use it. It's just 
things just kind of faded out for Commodore at that point. Yeah, I tried a couple of CD32 games. Um, there is a difference in the layout of the games too. Like they are clearly more console driven games. There's no interaction with the keyboard or mouse at all on those games. It's strictly controller based. Um, so it'll be interesting, uh, especially with this being USB. I like the idea, especially like I've never held it. So I don't know how comfortable a controller it is. It'll be interesting though, like you mentioned, using on Super Console X, for example, being able to play the Amiga games with an actual Amiga controller and an Amiga yep. mouse and things like that. That's pretty cool. Um, or, you know, if I'm emulating Amiga stuff on my PC, bring over the actual Amiga controller and things like that. So I definitely see myself buying an extra mouse and an extra gamepad yep. when this thing comes out. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do the gamepad, I think. Because, um, uh, again, more on the Amiga Forever show. We talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about it, but it's pretty cool stuff. So. All right. Well, we wanted to give you a little bit of an update. Uh, we had, you know, decent interaction on our our uh, first show on the mini, uh, and so we thought it'd be good to do a follow up because there was some interesting information. So, um, do you have anything else for for this show, Mike? No, I'm just excited because uh, I missed the Amiga boat the first time around. I only played a couple of games for it, so I'm kind of getting into it now for the first time. So it's going to be cool to kind of go back because what I loved what they did with the C64 and apparently carried over to their Vic 20 as well. It is you can boot it with the operating system and everything. So. I'll be able to get as much as I love Super Console X and the ability to emulate games on my PC. It's going to be kind of cool to be able to use an Amiga the way I would have used it had I been a part of that when it was. Happening. Cool. Well, we will keep you updated uh, as we go through. We'll also keep a watch out for Mike's uh, Legends Ultimate Mini. <laughs> see, so keep scanning the horizon, see if that ever shows up. So yeah. fingers crossed on that. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And thanks for watching, folks. Thanks, everybody.